Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very unusual location right here on the planet Earth known as Point Nemo. This is a location that you may have never heard of before, but it's also known as the spacecraft graveyard. In other words, it's a place where many space objects one day will end up on the bottom of the ocean. Welcome to What The Math. The nightmare corpse city of Riley was built in the measureless eons behind history by the vast, loathsome shapes that seeped down from the dark stars. There laid Great Cthulhu and his ords hidden in green slimy vaults. Now this is actually a quote from uh, a very very famous book by H.P. Lovecraft called uh, The Call of Cthulhu and it actually talks about the location right here on Earth known as the city of Riley. It just so happens that that particular location has also been chosen by the international space community as the so-called spacecraft graveyard. Now, this location is actually somewhere right here where I'm pointing at right now. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail by taking a look at, at the actual map uh, that you can get on uh, Wikipedia that sort of points at where the uh, point of Riley and Point Nemo are. And this right here is actually uh, from a slightly different uh, author that also uses Lovecraft stories uh, by the name of um, August uh, Durleith, who actually placed it a little bit farther. Now, what is this point and why is it so interesting, so unusual and mysterious and somewhat scary? Well, let me actually show it to you on Google Maps first. So right here on Google Earth, all we have to do is type the um, coordinates of the location, which is about minus 48.87 by minus 23.39. And it'll, you'll be taken there right away. So it's actually right here. Now, let's look at it in three dimensions as well, just so it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Notice how as I zoom out of here, I basically see absolutely n nothing nothing but open ocean and the ocean here is pretty deep it's uh, at least three kilometers deep as a matter of fact if you look around this area you'll discover that there is literally no land for a distance of at least 2688 kilometers the closest land to this location is actually up north there is a location which i might have already missed uh it's somewhere here i think there it is the pitcairn islands now we briefly talked about this in one of the previous videos but basically right here um this is where the closest location to point nemo is i would have to go 2688 kilometers south for me to basically make it to point nemo and no matter what direction you go to from Point Nemo, you will actually be at least 2,700 kilometers away from any land. The closest land uh, south of here is the Antarctica, which is over there. Uh, closest land east would be uh, right here in Chile. And the closest land west would uh, most likely be either New Zealand or Australia. Now, what is so special about this point though? And why do we use it for, uh, well, both mysterious stories, horror stories, but also the location where most large spacecraft actually end up, including at least one SpaceX rocket, pretty much every Russian progress capsule that is often used uh, on International Space Station for delivering various uh, goods and services, and uh, including the uh, infamous Russian Mir space lab that actually crashed here as well. And not so long ago, the Chinese Tiangong-1 missed this location by just a few thousand kilometers. It actually splashed down a little bit to the northwest of here. And it's most likely that even the International Space Station, which actually might get the commission in 2024, will also end up here as well. Well, there is really two main reasons why this is the place of choice for um, getting rid of all of our space junk and spacecraft. First of all, obviously, is that because there's really no one nearby. For at least 
2,688 kilometers, you're not going to find a single person in this area unless there is a fishing boat or something. On top of this, there's actually a very unusual current to the north of this region, known as the South Pacific Gyre, which is actually a very interesting type of a current that sort of circulates in such a way that it leaves the Point Nemo almost completely devoid of uh, nutrients. In other words, this location right here doesn't really have much to eat for even the sea uh, creatures. So not many things live here. There's no animals, there's uh, very little uh, ocean life, and there's no people. It's basically a relatively dead place. And for this specific reason, this is actually why crashing a spacecraft that potentially has dangerous components on it is actually really safe here. So even though most spacecraft will actually uh, probably take a few thousand kilometers to uh, deposit all of their de debris that's just re-entered the atmosphere, even considering all that, there's still a lot, a lot, of, a lot of uh, place here where nothing will probably get damaged, killed, or destroyed by the falling debris. And the name itself, Nemo, actually uh, stands for Latin for no one. Well, and officially, it's also uh, kind of named after Captain Nemo from Jules Verne's story, uh, where he actually does uh, go on very uh, long, very unusual ocean adventures. But more officially, this is really the place where nobody lives and nothing is here. And it's also the location for HP Lovecraft stories. There is actually at least one mystery about this location that is um, still unresolved. Uh, many, many years ago, approximately 900 kilometers to the south of here, so somewhere over here, uh, we actually heard a very, very unusual, extremely loud uh, sound, which seemed to have been of a, a potentially natural origin known as the bloop. This particular sound has its own Wikipedia entry, as a matter of fact, and you can actually read all about it uh, right here on Wikipedia. But uh, in essence, it was a very ultra low frequency, but extremely, extremely strong signal. And for many years, scientists couldn't really explain it. This actually happened back in 1997. And uh, by 2012, uh, we actually uh, decided, or I guess tried to explain this away as a kind of a unusual sound formed by um, a collision of ice uh, and specifically very, very large icebergs. But for many years, people also speculated that, well, one is that maybe it was a humongous creature that we've never met before. And since this is kind of close to Riley where Cthulhu sleeps, obviously many people started calling it the Cthulhu uh, awakening. But also it's probable that maybe this was some sort of a military test. But anyway, so this place is definitely very interesting, very unusual and very mysterious. And if one day you go on a long sailing trip, do come here, take a photo and then maybe just maybe send it over so we can talk a little bit more about what you actually find in this location. But other than that, this is actually all I wanted to talk about in this particular video, because even though this point is so cool and interesting, because it's a point of no one and nothing, there is really nothing to say about it. Other than the fact that a lot of spacecraft, especially larger spacecraft, will one day end their existence in this particular uh, spot. And I actually started a simulation with Universe Sandbox where uh, I had a few satellites orbiting around Earth, and I just wanted to show you what we usually do to basically uh, have the spacecraft re-enter our planet. So if a, if a satellite is really small, like for example, if it's just a communication satellite, it's just going to burn up in the atmosphere, so it doesn't have to be sent to any location on Earth. But a larger object, specifically um, a refueling craft, um, a space station, or even things like uh, larger rockets that, or larger boosters that use second or third stage to bring uh, satellites to orbit, like for example the SpaceX um, second stage, will often actually use this location for the final um, destination to crash into. In this particular case, all we have to do is basically uh, add a spe specific component to our satellite that will automatically deorbit it and make it crash into this location. So in other words, the satellite is deorbited in such a way that it basically ends up crashing right into this location and thus uh, prevents any kind of damage on land. Now, I think I actually missed Point Nemo in this particular simulation. 
because I wasn't really aiming anywhere specifically, but um, most of the spacecraft usually end up here if they're large enough to cause any serious damage. Now, Tiangon 1 was actually um, out of control, so it kind of crashed in the Pacific Ocean completely by accident. But normally this is where you want, not here, but here, this is normally where you want your spacecraft to end up because really this is the safest place and so nobody will actually be in any danger of being hit by a fast moving piece of metal. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about Point Nemo and the fact that this is actually where most large spacecraft end up eventually. Uh, there's over uh, 200 and specifically even close to 300 uh, spacecraft that are already in this location. So maybe just maybe one day we'll be able to recover some parts of it just to study the effects of re-entry on spacecraft. But for now though, that's all I wanted to talk about. And even though pretty much every week there's a satellite re-entering atmosphere and burning, in, burning up in the atmosphere, we normally don't have to worry about them because they basically just burn up completely. But larger craft do end up in here. Thank you for watching guys, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And if you haven't considered supporting this channel on Patreon, check it out, maybe this is something you would like to do to help this channel grow. See you later, bye bye.